Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Sheely. Today, as we look at God's Word, we might at times seem a bit confused, almost like we forgot how to read, or perhaps that His Word has been sealed away. Well, I've got good news. Because despite our inability and our unaccessibility to God's Word, Jesus comes all the same, opens God's word to us, reveals the forgiveness and grace that God has given us, and through that allows us to live according to his word. We open today with our first hymn, hymn number 589, <coughs> Speak, O Lord, Your Servant Listens. Please stand as we open in worship. Than a thousand elsewhere. 
Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. We speak the intro responsibly. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. Therefore, 
Behold, he will again do wonderful things with his people, with wonder upon wonder. And the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay? And the thing made should say of its maker, He did not make me. Or the thing formed say to him, Who formed it? He has no understanding. It is not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest. In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now for our New Testament reading, we go to uh, the book of Ephesians, and uh, we will go to chapter 5, and put in at verse 22, and go to <coughs> verse 33. <clears throat> Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water of the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother, and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now, this mystery is profound, and I am saying that refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand in honor of God. Our gospel text today is taken from Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 13, and uh, is kind of convenient because it follows along with our sermon text today, which is from Isaiah. Mark starts off with, when the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do, you, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, 
You have a fine way of rejecting the commandments of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you have gained, you have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things you do. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. You may be seated. I would ask the children to come forward at this time. Got a bit of a challenge for you. So go ahead and come on up. And if you want to sit up here, you can sit up here. Yeah, sit up here. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Yeah. yeah, sit down. All right, so. Who is ready for a seriously hard challenge? All right. Okay. You're all ready? You think you can do it? Okay. Do you see this Bible here? Well, it, there's a Bible inside of it. Okay. You see this Bible? Okay. All I need you to do is look up Isaiah 29, verse 11. Okay. All right, so here, we're going to give it to the strongest man here. Go ahead and do that for me. Look up Isaiah 29, verse 11. Without breaking my, uh, my case, by the way. you got to open it first. You, it, just open it. It's okay. There's a zipper. <laughs> a zipper that's tied down. What? You can't you open it? Just untie it. It's okay. He's working at it. It's too small of a knot, though, isn't it? Yeah? Oh, oh, wait, wait. I forgot. I forgot to tell you the other part. You have to do it with your eyes closed. <laughs> or, perhaps, I can give you a key. Here, let me, let me help you here. He, he actually made some progress. Unfortunately, that's the first of 12 knots. <laughs> and so what happens if I use the key instead? Would that make your job a little bit easier? Yeah, go ahead. Look up Isaiah 29, verse 11 for me. He is back his brother. <laughs> Okay, you ready to listen, Levi? I think he's almost got it. Yep, he's almost there. All right, what does Isaiah 29, verse 11 say? For you, this whole vision is nothing but the word sealed in a scroll. And if you give the scroll to someone who can read it and say to him, Read this, please, he will answer, I can't, it is sealed. Oh. So, were you able to read that? Only after it was unsealed, right? Yeah? Okay, so here's another thing. All right? Here, Aspen. Here, can you read that for me? No. Yeah. All right, good job. Can you read it? Can you say yes or no? No? You can't read? Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Now, I got a question. Why could you read it, but she couldn't? She's a baby. Oh, because she hasn't learned how to read yet, huh? Yeah. Well, why could she open it, but you couldn't? It wasn't sealed. Now, it's like something changed, right? Now, I've got the interesting thing for you. The change, the thing that allowed you to read God's word and allowed her to hold God's word in her hands was that Jesus opened it up. And so when we consider God's word and we consider how we're able to understand it, how we're able to know it, Jesus is the key. <laughs> he opens up God's word. He allows us to not only have it in our hands, 
but to be able to read it and to be able to understand it. And how does he do that? He does that through his death. Because by going to the cross, he opened up faith to us. He opened up God's word to us so that we would be able to not only know it, but be able to give him back thanks and praise, saying, thank you, God, for forgiving me, for giving me faith, for making me your child. All right, let's fold our hands. Fold your hands. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God. Dear God. Thank, you thank you for sending Jesus to be the key of your word so that I would know I'm forgiven and be able to trust in you for all things. And all God's children said, Amen. All right, you can go sit down again. We now respond with the responsory, which is printed on page 7 of your bulletin. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place of your glory in the Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. As we move into the catechism portion of the service of prayer and preaching, we enter into a period of instruction. Instruction in God's Word, instruction by God's Word, and also condemnation. <coughs> by God's word as we start with his law, as we recognize that we have failed to satisfy even a single iota of God's law, and to teach us that, we have one of our confirmation students. And so please stand as we say together the gospel story using the words of the Apostles' Creed. When someone asks what you believe, you can respond by saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Having now heard the gospel, we go to our Heavenly Father, asking for not only His grace and forgiveness, but for His help in following His word. Boldly and confidently we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
You may be seated as we join together in singing hymn 581. These are the Holy Ten Commandments, verses 1, 8, and then 11 through 12. Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in our text for today, Isaiah has uh, kind of an illustration to show us. As he says, the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot. That seems like a simple enough illustration, but it plays into a much larger understanding. And to be able to have that larger understanding, I need to back you up a little bit uh, into the context of Isaiah, into the context of Judah at the time, and specifically King Hezekiah. Now, King Hezekiah, it's recorded in 2 Kings chapter 18, 5 through 6, trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that there was none like him among all the kings of Judah after him, nor among those who were before him, for he held fast to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept the commandments that the Lord commanded Moses. Now, this is a pretty glowing illustration of what a good king should be. In fact, you could argue that King Hezekiah was the literal best king in the entire kingdom of Judah in its entire history. Now, to be fair, David wasn't king over only Judah. He was king over all of Israel. So, we'll leave David out of the comparison here. But King Hezekiah was a good king. And that's not often said in the Bible. It's not often said to the extent that of all the kings of the northern part, Israel, the other tribes, not a single one of them 
was given credit as a good king. And of the tribes, or of Judah, only a couple, only a smattering were given that title. The king Hezekiah was a good king. He led Israel in the restoration of God's word. In the restoration of following through. He led Israel during a time of invasion by Sennacherib, the king of Assyria. A king who literally just destroyed the entire northern kingdom of Israel. Exiled them into, well, the unknown of history. Sennacherib came down to attack Judah next. His army of over 185,000 men stood outside of the walls of Jerusalem. They taunted Hezekiah. They taunted God. And what did Hezekiah do? He turned to the Lord again and again. And God wiped out over 185,000 thousand of the Assyrians. They woke up and all the men were dead bodies all around them. Logically, the king of Assyria left and Hezekiah was freed from that conquest by trusting in God. And so you might ask then, why would Isaiah have these next words to say? This people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me. And their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. You see, Hezekiah trusted in God and he by law and decree required that the nation of Judah follow God. But as Isaiah tells us here, Sounds like quite a few of them were hypocrites about it. They followed God with their mouth and their lips, but not with their heart. They feared God because that was the commandment taught by men. Not because they desired to follow Him, not because they wanted to. They did not deserve Hezekiah as their king. They didn't deserve to have God as their Lord. They did not deserve anything good because all they did was the motions. They didn't care. They didn't want to follow God. They did it because it was the commandment of the king. They did it because they feared the retribution of man. They didn't actually want to trust in God above all things. Well, because of this, Isaiah says, because of this situation, because their hearts are far from Him, what does he say? What is God's response to this hypocrisy? What is God's response to this blatant disregard of Him and His Word? He says, therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of the wise shall perish, and the discerning of their discerning men shall be hidden. That isn't quite the fire and brimstone we're expecting, right? We're expecting to hear, all right, lay it on it, God. We know it's coming. We know they're going to get in exile. We know they're going to be destroyed. Lay it in. And he doesn't. Therefore, I will do wonderful things, wonder upon wonder. You know, that same word is used a bunch in the book of Exodus when God is performing his wonders against the nation of Egypt. When he's performing the wonders of bringing the children of Israel out through the Red Sea to Mount Sinai to display his glory where he tells them that I am Lord, your God who brought you out of Egypt. This is the wonder of wonders of God's gracious love for his people. And behold, he will do it again, Isaiah tells us. What's going on, we might ask? What's going on is exactly what Jesus tells the 
Pharisees and the hypocrites of his time. That they're doing the same thing that the people of Isaiah and Hezekiah's time were doing. That they're going through the motions, that they're honoring God with their lips and their mouths, but their hearts aren't in it. They don't care. They're only following the commandments because, well, that's the in thing to do. It's what is expected right now. It's what's expected according to society. And Jesus, rightfully so, opens their eyes to their own hypocrisy. As Isaiah continues, he, he explains that in this coming day, this day of wonder of wonders, when God will do these amazing things, he says, in that day, the deaf shall hear the words of a book. And out of their gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see. Now, that should remind you of something. Because it's interesting, when John the Baptist sent his disciples to Jesus to ask Jesus, are you the one who was to come, or should we wait for another? What does Jesus say? He says, look around you. The deaf hear, the blind see, and the good news is proclaimed to all. In other words, I am the fulfillment of prophecy. I am the good, wonderful thing that has come. I am the one who opens up the words of the book, who allows the deaf to hear, the blind to see, to give the meek fresh joy in the Lord, the poor among mankind, exaltation in the Holy One of Israel. It is I. I am He. And so, we must ask ourselves, are we in that same place as the people of Isaiah and Hezekiah's day? Are we in that same place as the people of Jesus' day? The first commandment is, you shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Have we been guilty of honoring God with our mouths and our lips? Have we been guilty of fearing the commandment of God simply because it's what's expected of us? That's what the church expects. Sure, I expect it. Your Christian brother and sister expects it. I mean, just go on any Facebook post and see how much they yell at people, right? We expect it. But are we doing it because we fear, love, and trust in God above all things? Are we doing it because we have a joyous reason to have our hearts belong to God? Are we doing it because we have earned this wonderful place as God's children? What are we doing in our lives? Are we following the Jesus that's been taught to us by mankind Instead of the Jesus that He Himself revealed to us? Have we, been fear, love, have we been putting our fear, love, and trust, and essentially in our own understanding, in ourselves, in our own ignorant teachings, instead of putting God above all things? How do we relate to the people of Hezekiah's day? How do we relate to even the Pharisees of Jesus' day? We are probably about the same. We don't deserve anything good. We don't deserve 
God's mercy. We do not deserve His grace. And therefore, Isaiah tells us, therefore, behold, God will again do wonderful things with His people. With wonder upon wonder. Guess what? You don't get what you deserve. You deserve punishment. You deserve exile. You deserve damnation. But that's not what God gives you. Instead of that, He sends His Son to open His Word to the blind. He sends His Son to reveal His Word to the illiterate. He sends His Son to tell us of God's promised grace. He sends His Son to tell us that not only are you forgiven and free, but through my death, we, the Father and I, have adopted you as my brothers and sisters. Through my sacrifice on the cross, you are not only forgiven, but you are a child of God. You have the very Holy Spirit living within you. You did not earn this. You did not deserve this. Instead, I wanted to do a wonder upon you. I chose to give you my love. I chose to give you wonder upon wonder. And let me tell you all that I have done for you. I loved you to the point of death, even death on the cross. Jesus comes to us. Jesus comes to us and unveils God's grace. Jesus unlocks God's love for us. Despite our blindingly sinful hearts and mouths, Jesus comes to us and unveils God's grace. He unlocks God's love for us. And through Him, through Him, therefore, instead of being punished, wonder upon wonder, Christ takes the punishment for us. He dies for us and we are given forgiveness. We are given forgiveness and faith only through the revelation that Jesus gives. The revelation of faith in His sacrifice. Can we then draw near to Him with our hearts and our mouths? Because when we try to follow a, a false Jesus, a, a Jesus honored and taught by the sinful world, a Jesus illustrated by mankind's deepest desires. When we do that, we are that blind, illiterate person, groping in the dark, trying to open a book that has been locked shut. And even if it was open, one that we would not be able to read or understand. In other words, our fear, love, and trust are placed not in Christ, but in our own works instead of the works of God. So praise be to God because He has not treated us like we deserve. He has come so that the deaf shall hear and the blind shall see. He has come to exalt us poor, miserable sinners into God's family. We are God's children because He has come to us. Jesus has come to give us joy. He has come knowing that the day when He comes, the day when He comes, we will be given the keys to Him. The Holy One of Israel, Jesus Christ, is our salvation. He is our freedom from sin. He is the One who comes that the meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord. And the poor among us shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. We are forgiven and free because... God's love says, therefore, I will again do wonderful things with this people. 
with wonder upon wonder, I will die for them. Amen. We now worship God with our tithes and offering. And as we do so, we will sing hymn 543, standing on the last verse as the offering is brought forward. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, 
for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our preschool, for the San Juan Bible Camp and the Heart to Heart Pregnancy Center, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonal weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For thanksgiving for Dave Wright's healing, for Harold, Lolita Alston, David Blodell, Haley Dye, Deb Eicher, Sam Emerson, Auden Francoise Nieces, Brian Frisch, Kenny Good, Sue Gosnell, Sandy Greenlee, Jerry Henneman, Rose Jurgens, Mark Johnson, Brittany Jones, Eleanor Larson, Carol McCall, Monica Sheets, Marion Sperling, and Ada Torres. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We now join together to call it to the day. Almighty and merciful God, defend your church from all false teaching and error that your faithful people may confess you to be the only true God and rejoice in your good gifts of life and salvation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in the morning prayer. I thank, I thank you, my Heavenly, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. <laughs>
The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated as we sing hymn 585, Lord Jesus Christ with us abide. But 
the courage that God gives is not limited to that time and place, right? It is for all times and all places. And so if you would like a book, please put your name down on here. I'm going to be ordering them on, well, I'm not going to order them. Crystal's going to order them on Monday. And so this is your last chance. If you would like a book, please sign up. And if you wait, you're not going to get the group discount. So go get one. It'll just cost more. Um, after fellowship today, we do have a special voters meeting. And so if you can, please stay and consider the uh, updates to the Constitution. Um, last May, you, the voters, wanted to make updates to uh, change some of the requirements for office and the terms of office and stuff like that. And so we, we made those changes and we sent them up to the district and the district, well, they don't just review that, they review everything. And so they've got all the happy to glads and changes that have changed over the last several years in legislation and, and legal speak and all that type of stuff. And so those are the changes we've got for you. Um, it has not changed any functional, practical <laughs> aspect of the Constitution, but it keeps it in line with modern day standards for these types of documents. And so uh, take a look at that as we uh, consider. The youth group, and this is actually somewhat of a news to the youth group themselves because we've only briefly talked about it. It's all kind of just been flying forwards. The youth group is going to be selling yeah. baked goods at the Night of Praise in the Park that the Ministerial Alliance is putting on. And so if you would like to help with that, um, just bake up some baked goods and bring them in on the week of September 13th. So like on the 11th or 12th, ideally, you can put them in the kitchen. That way we've got more baked goods to sell because on September 13th, that Friday evening, um, we are gonna do a night of praise in the park. We've got at least five different bands, I think right now, um, that are gonna be uh, doing that, uh, that praise night for us. And then in between each set, there will be a little community support organization that will probably say a few words. Uh, the idea being is to worship together as Christians and to celebrate the joys that God has given to us as this Montezuma community. Any other questions or announcements? Yes. I just have an announcement about the meeting. We really need a quorum to be present in order to move this forward so that we don't have to go through this uh, again next year and can get it settled this year before officer elections for next year. So please, 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 if you can attend, please stay for that. And please, please, please sign in on the sign-in sheet, which is on the table just inside the fellowship hall. And write your name so I can read it. And that would be awesome. Thank you. Yes. I need to meet real quickly, briefly, with contramans Haley, Andrew, Nathaniel, and Edith, because I need to either take new or update your pictures for the contraman guardian angel table. Okay? Can we not take my picture today? <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Yeah, we'll do our. We'll send you one or do ours. That would be okay. great. Yeah. <laughs> Just try to get this done. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other announcements? Do we have any visitors who wouldn't mind introducing themselves or perhaps reintroducing yourselves if this is your first time? You mind standing up? Uh, I'm Chris Young, uh, normally from the Tucson area, but my husband and I are up here for the summer. And right now, he and our son went uh, deep sea tuna fishing for the week. So nice. I'm holding down the fort up here. I belong to uh, Lutheran Church in Oral Valley. Well, welcome. Glad to have you join us. And I think the other visitors have all been introduced in the past. Oh, that's I forgot. Yes, I'm Ed Blado. Yeah, from Hamilton, Montana, in our Grace Lutheran Church there. And I'm David's father. And I thank you, God, and all your people for praying for him to recover from his broken leg because I miss him a lot. <laughs> and he goes he goes in for the, the next surgery which is going to be kind of the more involved intensive one right. to do the not a skin graft it's a what do you call it a flap. skin flap. flap yeah 
to, to replace it. They've, they've scraped the, the, the infection off the bone. They've got, it, it, what, a, what a complicated mess. And so he needs all the prayers. But thank you for joining us. I think that's all the people who are new. I mean, Solomon's been introduced, everyone else. Ah, there's another announcement. <laughs> with that, we go forward having the word of God unlocked within us so that we can share his word with the world around us. Amen. <laughs>